Hello and welcome again. Um, I am really excited for this one. Um, very, <laughs> very excited. I have here the Crown XLS 2502. Um, this is their Drive Core 2 series. I believe it's been out for a while, um, but I'm super excited. It's a class D amplifier. I was just going to go through a couple of the features, um, my plans for it. Um, I didn't go do an, like an unboxing video for this only because it's really simple. Um, it literally has the amplifier in the box, a manual that covers all four models of the Drive, two, Drive Core 2 series, um, and the power cable. That's it. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you guys like my thoughts on the amplifier so far and also uh, what I plan to do with it as well. So, I do have two of these for my setup. I'm going to be using one for each channel on my front left and right um, because they are bio-wired. And this amp has some pretty cool features um, that are going to allow me to really simplify my setup um, and really drive my speakers the way I want to be able to drive them. Um, so, you have the power button over here. And when you turn it on, you do get these bright blue LEDs that shoot out the sides. Um, it's really got kind of a nice aesthetic if you're into that type of uh, look. Um, and then you have your LCD panel in the middle here um, that shows you uh, different information about it. Um, and then, of course, you have your individual gain switches for your uh, left and right, or as they call it, channel one and channel two. Uh, once you set these, they're not volume knobs. Don't use these as volume knobs. Um, especially with the power of these amplifiers because you could quickly uh, blow some speakers. This amp would just demolish speakers if you're not careful. Um, just to give you an idea, you open up the manual here. And I think they have the power ratings on one of these pages. Let's see. Here we go. So, um, here's the uh, power matrix here for the amplifiers. And as you can see, I have the 2502. So, um, that being said, you can see here at two ohms, it'll do 1200 watts per channel. That's right, it's safe down to two ohms. At four ohms, it'll do 775 watts per channel. At eight ohms, it'll do 440 watts per channel. You can bridge this into 4 ohms, it'll do 2400 watts bridged. And at 8 ohms, it'll do 1550 watts bridged into 8 ohms. These Class D amplifiers are supposed to be beast when it comes to power. Um, but they're also highly efficient. This amp weighs like little to nothing. You can see here, the, the here's the, the physical specifications. The 2502... Uh, the actual net weight, 10.8 pounds. Really? That, I mean, 10.8 pounds is nothing when you're talking about amplifiers. I mean, I think my, um, my Marantz over there weighs something to the tune of like 30 pounds, 30, 30, 35 pounds, something like that, um, for my power amplifier. So 10.8 pounds, um, and then here are some other specifications if you're interested in as well. Um, one of the really cool things I'd like to print out, point out on this page, though, is the sensitivity. Um, a lot of people, uh, when they get, or I have seen when they get this amplifier, um, they say, oh, it doesn't perform all that great. Um, I have to turn it up so loud to get it to work. Um, it's, it has two different sensitivities, and you can change them. Uh, you can have the 0.775. Um, for you know home home theater equipment this is what home theater equipment will usually put out uh for the signal um versus the pro level stuff which is going to be like 1.4 so what's so great about this amplifier is it'll actually allow you to switch in between the two so you can use this in say like a home theater setup like i will be doing instead of using it in a pro grade uh setup so it's a very flexible amplifier that can do a, a whole lot of things um, I'm going to show you now, um, well, before I show you that, I'm just going to walk you around to the back so you can kind of see what's going on in the back here. So 
Um, you have your uh, reset switch here, power. Um, I'm in America, so uh, we're set for 120 volts out of the wall. Um, you do have this aux port here, so it doesn't have a 12 volt remote in. Um, it has this auxiliary port. So you have two pins here that when they make contact with each other, it'll put the um, amplifier into sleep. Um, and then you have a pin here for status. And do not try to just, you know, wire 12 volts into the sleep portion and think, no, that's, that's not how it works. I don't want you to damage your um, AVR or your uh, crown amplifier by doing that. So don't do that. Um, you have two speak on connectors. Um, channel two is uh, just uh, pretty much uh, a four pole, um, while channel one is eight. So if you're using it in bridged um, or you're running by wire uh, into one speak on, you can do that by you know connecting your speak on connector to channel one. Um, you do have stereo output here, and you can run it bridged by connecting to just the two uh, connectors in the middle. Um, now, when you buy this, um, it's not set up for uh, banana plugs to start with. Um, in the centers, they have little plugs in there, and that's for European models. Um, you can pull those out. I pulled them out just by using a screw. I stuck a screw in the end of it and screwed it in and then pulled out the plugs. It was very simple, but you can use banana plugs with this. Um, otherwise, if you're not using banana plugs, they do unscrew, and you can just put bare wire inside and then screw them back in and it will hold your bare wire just fine um, not a whole lot of space in there for bare wire so you may want to run banana plugs that's what I'm doing so I like um, moving over here to the input side um, you have your RCA inputs in the middle here um, you have your balanced inputs um, to the left and right of that um, and of course they mark them as channel 1 channel 2 um, you have your link uh, inputs here. Now these can either be used as inputs or outputs for the balanced. So if you want to link two of these amplifiers together, um, you can do that with quarter inch jacks um, and connect two of these amplifiers together or you can use it as an input uh, as well for it. I don't, I didn't, haven't seen it in the manual, it wasn't very clear, but I don't think they'll work for linking amplifiers if you're using RCAs. I think you have to use the balanced inputs in order to link, use these to link the amplifiers. Um, might be something worth trying in the future if the need should arise. Um, but one thing to note, if you are using it in bridged configuration, or like I will be using it in Y configuration, um, you just connect to channel one. Um, and that is it for that. All right, so moving back around. To the front again. All right, let me get it in focus so you can really see this display. Now, I don't know if you can see below it, but you just have your menu select, your previous button, and your next button. Menu is meant to uh, select your items. Um, you press and hold it to get into the menu, and it takes you in. And then you have your previous and select to like, kind of scroll through the menu items. Now, we'll just go through this one by one. Um, amp mode. You see you have stereo, uh, bridged, and Y input. Now stereo, I think it's self-explanatory. It works as a stereo amplifier in that point. Um, you have bridged. Bridged um, allows you to get that full access to all that power into one channel. Um, and as I spoke about before, that's a lot of power to put into one channel. Um, and then input Y is what's really cool. So input Y takes the uh, signal from channel one and splits it into uh, two channels. So you can have one input that goes into two channels, and this is what I'll be running, because I'm going to be running one amplifier per speaker uh, for my bi-wired, or bi-amplified, my bi-amped front channels. Um, and this is going to make it incredibly easy, because I'm not going to have to uh, run inputs from one speaker to another, or, um, or from one amp to another, just to power one speaker. I can use one amp per speaker and have them by wired. And it's going to really help me with another feature that this amp has as well. Um, and then, of course, you go down and you can go back. Now, the next thing that's really cool, um, if we go down to the next item, is the crossovers that are built in. 
Now with the crossover, you can do it per channel. So it's not like you cross over the whole entire amp and it does it on both channels. So like if I go into channel one, I can say, I can set no crossover, low pass, band pass, or high pass. So let's say for channel one, I want to set a high pass. So I can go in here and I can select this. And I think it'll do anywhere from, uh, I want to say it's 30 hertz all the way up to uh, 3 uh, kilohertz. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So let's say if I want my high pass crossover to stop at, uh, let's say, let's just leave it at 80. 80 hertz. Um, I can set it there. And then I go to channel 2. And let's say I want to run a low pass. And let's say I want to do, let's just say 250. Let's just say 250. So I can set my low pass for 250. So now um, both my crossovers are set, but I have channel one that's set for uh, 80. And then I have channel two set for 250. And I can buy amplify my speakers by using one amplifier and just using the different channels for the different section of the speaker. Um, which I think is really cool. Now, I spoke about input sensitivity when uh, I went over the manual. This is where you change it. And it's very important that you change it if you're going to use this in a home theater environment and you're not using it in a pro level system. Um, so you go in here and you can set it for 1.4 volts or you can set it for 0.775 volts. So that's what you need to have it set for if you're using it in a home theater environment. If you don't have it set for this, you're going to run into issues where you think the amp is just not producing, uh, you know, the, the desired response or the desired effect. It's not going to play as loud as you would like it to. It's not going to be as easy to match with other speakers that you may have in your setup. Or if you're using it for a subwoofer, the subwoofer isn't going to be as loud as what you think it was supposed to be with this amplifier unless you change the setting if you're running something that's not pushing that 1.4 volts like pro audio gear does. Um, so I think it's great that Crown has integrated something like this. Um, it really speaks to the versatility of this uh, amplifier. So we're going to go back. And then of course you have a system section. So you here, you have some other cool features. So you can actually program the display to sleep. So sleep mode is currently off, but I can set it for a 30 second delay, one minute delay, two minute delay, five minute delays, and then this display will turn off. Um, it doesn't mean the lights and everything, it's just talking about this display. Um, so you can turn that off. Um, I, for right now, I'm going to go to sleep mode off, and I'm just going to keep it like that. Um, the next thing under system is lighting. So this speaks to the actual uh, lighting on it. So the panel... Um, which are these blue lights on either side um, that's set to on but I can set it to if I click on it off and they turn off so I don't have those annoying blue lights on when I'm trying to watch a movie or what have you um, or I can turn them back on and they come back on um, I think they're pretty cool for right now so I'm gonna leave them on um, and then uh, next you have your meters, um, which these are your meters here, um, and they have a few different lights on them. I don't have these completely hooked up, so it's not going to tell you everything, but this one will turn green when you have a signal. This one will light up when you have uh, your 20 decibels below clip. This one will light up when your 10 decibels below clip. At clipping, this will light up, and then this one will light up if you're starting to uh, be, uh, it'll throw itself into thermal protection. Um, so you can turn those meters on and off if you choose to. I'm going to leave them on. Um, and then we go back and select to go back. Um, now security, I believe that allows you to lock this so nobody can mess with this. Um, I'm not going to lock it for now because I've still got to play with my crossovers um, and do a couple things before I'm ready just to uh, lock it completely. Um, and then of course you can go to information and information will give you things like system information um, everything here information about the temperature of your channels um, 
some of the stuff I'm not exactly sure what it means but I'll show you guys anyway um, and then below information you have factory reset now if you're buying this amplifier used I would highly recommend that you go through and do a factory reset um, just so you're clearing out um, all the settings that are reverting it back to stereo and uh, whatnot so you're not damaging anything that you plan to hook it up to and then the last thing is back you hit that um, and of course you go back um, and then exit and that is how you run through the menu on a crown XLS 2502 now I think it's pretty much gonna be the same on every crown um, XLS model uh, just with the difference of, uh, you know, physically some of the models are a little shorter. Um, they all are pretty much the same height and width. Um, and of course power is the big difference between the different models that they have. Um, this video is a little bit longer uh, than I think I intended, but I really wanted to cover all this stuff on this amplifier uh, to really give you guys an idea of what you're getting when you get the XLS model um, of amplifiers from Crown and to give you a walkthrough and some of the pitfalls that you may come across uh, when trying to integrate something like this into your system. Um, I'm, I'm really thinking about doing a video of how to create a remote turn on uh, or a 12 volt trigger for these amplifiers. Um, I haven't seen a video out there for that yet and I know how to do it. Um, if that's something you want to see, um, you know, drop a comment um, like this video uh, please subscribe to my channel so you can see uh, when I actually do the integration of these amplifiers into my system and until then I will see you guys next time thanks